Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so very, very much for joining us. And I say that in a very special way. If this happens to be your very first time to be tuning into the broadcast, we study the Word of God together here at Bible Tract Echoes. And right now, my Bible sits open to 2 Peter chapter 3. If it is at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, 2 Peter and chapter 3. And as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracks. And my announcer is going to be giving you three ways at the end of the program how you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Be ready for that. Have pen and paper ready for that. Jot down our contact information so that I can send you the free, did I say it was free? It's free, the free sample packet of gospel tracks. I'm going to highlight one of those tracks here in a moment. I'm going to do that hopefully to stir your interest in getting some tracks from us. But let me lead into our study time this way. A couple of days ago, I was on the telephone with a man who is a believer. He did not grow up in church at all. He lived a pretty sinful life until he was 29. That's when he got saved. Well, this man had been living with a woman, but they were not married. And so a very short time after he came to Christ, their relationship split apart. He was a Christ follower. She is not a believer to this day. Well, the couple had two children together, so now they have to learn how to raise these kids even though they do not live together. Well, the lady hates this man's love for Jesus. She hates that he loves to teach the children about Jesus. But because the lady hates the gospel, she makes this man's life as difficult as she possibly can She tries to make it nigh unto impossible for him to take the kids to church and so on. Well, on the phone, this man and I talked. We talked in part about how he needs to be living a life marked by the peace of God in his life, even though this lady wants to make his life, well, almost to hell on earth. When I spoke to the man, I used the passage before us that we're going to be reading about today, and you'll see why here in just a moment. Some days... It can be easy to live a life of peace. At other days, well, it can be downright almost impossible, it seems, if it wasn't for the power of God. Get your Bible and join us. Get something on which you can jot some notes. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to an evangelism tool. I'm referring to a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ written in a format that's easy to carry with you in your shirt pocket. I keep some in my back pocket. Ladies put them in their purse. You can have them if you've got some people in their phone holder, and so on. I found all kinds of creative ways in which people keep tracks with them. But one of the tracks that's in that sample packet I want to send to you is this one. It's entitled, Two Kinds of Death. Two Kinds of Death. It begins by using Ephesians 2.1, which says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. The track begins this way. Have you been quickened? Not when did you join a church? turn over a new leaf, take communion, or try to do better, but when were you born again? If you haven't been, then you are dead. And it goes on to talk about what people know from common physical death to describe spiritual death. Here's a great 
clear, very clear gospel track laying out the plan of salvation, two kinds of death. It's just one of the over 40 gospel tracks that's in that sample packet I want to send to you. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. You can just jot down our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org. O-R-G. Go there. You can get the sample packet ordered online. Well, if your Bible is open to 2 Peter and chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says this, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Stop right there. Now, verse 14 will be our focus today. It begins with that word, wherefore. That means that what he's about to say here in the passage is put forward based upon what's already been talked about to this point. In short, what he has said comes down to two basic things. Number one, that the world is going to end in a fiery, melting destruction of the earth, All we see in planet Earth and the atmosphere around is going to be burned up. Our physical world will be destroyed. That's the first thing he said. Again, the second general truth he said is this. A day of righteousness is going to begin here in a new heaven and a new earth. That time period that this righteousness will begin is called eternity. When God destroys this planet and makes a new heaven and new earth, at that time, all who have received Christ by faith are going to enter into eternity with God. It will be a place of true and perfect righteousness. But all those who have not received Christ as Savior, they're going to enter into the lake of fire. They will be there forever. And in light of these two basic facts, the Holy Spirit now challenges believers here in verse 14. If you have a piece of paper there, jot down three words beginning with the letter L, like in the word Lord. The three words are these, love, look, and life. All of these are going to come based upon verse 14, love, look, and life. Let's talk about love, first of all. In light of what has been said, verse 14 begins with a reminder, a reminder to believers that they are loved. Peter loves them. He calls them beloved. But friend, you can go to hell being loved by Peter. That's a fact. You dare not just try to depend on being loved by your pastor, loved by some religious leader or your grandfather that's a preacher or whatever. The issue is not, are you loved by some human being, but are you loved by God? Now, listen, to be sure, God loves you. John 3.16 is just one of the places where God declares his love for sinners. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that being said, I did not ask the question. I did not deal with the idea whether or not God loves you. What I'm dealing with here is this. Are you in a love relationship with God? Many a young man has had a deep love for a young lady. She, though, was in love with somebody else. They were not in a love relationship. You only get in a love relationship with God by receiving his son, Jesus Christ, as your Savior. Now, that begins with you coming to grips with how unlovable you are. You are a sinner. The Bible says you are a sinner from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You are, by your very human nature, a sinner. That's why you do the sins that you do. You were born with a sinful nature, and you quickly display to all around you when you are a youngster that you are a sinner. In God's holiness, there is not a lick in you. There's nothing in you or in me that makes us lovable in the eyes of God. Nonetheless, God elects to love us. He chooses to love us. That's why he gave us his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave. Why does God remind believers here in verse 14 that they are loved? 
Well, the answer is this. God is going to be calling us to live a life of righteousness. He calls us to practice his righteousness before the unbelieving world, a world that's not only unbelieving, they are unrighteous, they are unholy, and they're gospel-hating. That's the world that we live in. That can be a hard thing to practice. It's hard to practice a righteous life in the world we're in. So God reminds us, he says, listen, I love you. Even though you're still yet in this uncivilized, unrighteous world, I love you. Jesus came. He came into this unrighteous, ungodly world. And he lived a righteous life. And now Jesus calls us to be like him in this sin-cursed, crooked world. We will be greatly aided to live a righteous life as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Jesus is declared to be many things in the Word of God, but two of them are these. Number one, Jesus is the author or the pathfinder of our faith. That means that Jesus stirs up faith in faithless sinners that draws him to himself. Secondly, Jesus is declared to be the lover of our soul. And so great is his love that he laid down his life even for the people who whose hands were crucifying him. He died for those mocking him while he hung on the cross in pain. And, friend, he died for you and for me. He died for sinners of all ages, all skin colors, all national origins, and all political belief systems. Because of his great love for us, because of his great love for us, as we keep our focus on him, his great love for us, then we can imitate his righteous life in the day-to-day world that we live in. My man on the phone that I was talking to where his gal that he used to live with before he got saved and so on, how she is making, trying to make a wreck of his life. He is trying to live a life loving Christ and displaying that love even to this gal that God loves her. She's doing everything to make his life a living, difficult place to live. And we had to talk about that. But that brings me to my second word. The word is look. If you are in a love relationship with Jesus, then you can look forward to the day when righteousness will permeate everything. For all eternity, it will be easy to be righteous. It'll be easy to live in righteous a way because everything will be righteous. Everyone that you see will be righteous. The world will be righteous. Everything will be right. So for these fleeting few years that you and I live here on earth, Let's live righteously for God's glory with God's help and so that others can see that Christ saves sinners and transforms their lives. I intended to get to the part here in the verse where it talks about his peace. We'll deal with that tomorrow, Lord willing. Dear friend, God has seemed to push my heart toward the direction of emphasizing his love for sinners today. Have you experienced his love? Now, he loves you, but are you in a love relationship with him? Are you like that uh, young man who had a love for a gal, but she did not respond? She loves somebody else. God loves you, but you haven't responded, have you? You love yourself. You love the sinful life that's before you. You love living for yourself. You're going to have to abandon that, repent of it, and come to Christ and receive his love to ever be born again. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.